Hello and welcome to this COSAN tutorial, which is part of the COSAN training course on uncertain quantification. This video is an introduction to Bayesian networks. My name is Diego Estrada Lugo and I'm a PhD student at the Institute for Risk and Uncertainty at the University of Liverpool, and I am also part of the COSAN working group. During this video, we are going to explain what is a Bayesian network, some probability concepts, how we can build our Bayesian network models, and the type of analysis that we can do with them. Also, I'm going to explain what is the inference computation and give some numerical examples to clarify things. Uh, some concepts that we will need um, for this uh, video uh, is about the base rule, the probability dependence and marginalization. So, what is a Bayesian network? It is a probabilistic graphical model to study the genuine dependencies of uncertain parameters. It is presented in a directed acyclic graph. This means that there are not cycles in, the, in our network. And the, the network is made of uh, nodes that represent um, the events or components of a system, and they have associated a random variable. Uh, then these nodes are connected through arcs or edges that represent the causality or dependency between these nodes. Uh, with a Bayesian network, we can do um, diagnostic as well as, pro as pro prognostic analysis. And we have different types of nodes. Um, for example, we have the parents that are those nodes that are influencing another nodes, which are called the child nodes. And then the root nodes are those that have no parents. So in this example, as we can see, um, alarm is a child of fire and tampering, but it's also a parent of living. Also, smoke and report are only child nodes. But fire and tampering are also root nodes only because they have no parents. So the advantages of uh, Bayesian networks is that they are intuitive uh, for modeling, not only for uh, experts, but also for not expert uh, people. Uh, they are easy to understand, also to maintain and update, so we can, uh, because we can insert new information in the way of evidence. We have plenty of documentation, as there are uh, a lot of tutorials, books, and video tutorials as well. Uh, we can do uncertainty quantification through the use of random variables. Um, and also, um, the input data can be uh, from historical records, experimental data, expert, no expert knowledge, etc. However, uh, they can be computationally expensive when large when we have a large number of nodes or uh, connections between the nodes. Also, uh, it suffers from exponential growth of data storage structures, which are called uh, conditional probability tables. Even though Bayesian networks were created for artificial intelligence uh, in 1986 by Judy Apparel, now it has many varieties of applications that can go from computational biology to speech recognition, also to uh, decision support uh, systems, uh, to risk analysis or financial and marketing informatics. So the way to represent mathematically a Bayesian network is through the use of a joint probability distribution, which corresponds to the product of the events in the network. Um, as we can see in this formula, the probability of an event xi uh, conditioned to the probability of its parents is uh, multiplied n times where n is the number of, uh, of nodes in the network. So as we can see in this example with these four nodes, um, the joint probability distribution of this network uh, can be given as the probability of the event A times the probability of the event B times the probability of the event C conditioned to A and B, and, the, and times the probability of D conditioned to its parent C. So how do we model with uh, Bayesian networks? First of all, we have to um, build our prior probabilities. So 
we have to get uh, the probabilities uh, from historical, historical records or expert knowledge uh, and then store them in the conditional probability tables. Then the states, um, the states of the nodes have to be defined and they must exhaust all the possible status of the variable. Also, the probabilities attached to each of those states must sum up to one. And a node can have uh, from two up to n number of states, so they can be Boolean or multi-state. Also, the arcs should always point from uh, apparent to child nodes. So, following the principle of, uh, of co the going from cause to consequence. So, as we can see in this, in this uh, example, uh, we have a network to, to study the probability of having a uh, grass wet. Okay, uh, that this event is affected by the probability of a uh, sprinkler being activated or being true or uh, having rain. And these two events will depend on the probability of being cloudy. Okay. As we can see here, cloudy has a probability attached of, uh, of 0 0.8. This, this value, this probability can come from any meteor meteorological records that can tell us uh, how often it will rain, for example, in, in certain region. Okay, and then the conditional probability of rain, we can see here the conditional probability table. So rain is conditioned to each of the states of cloudy. So it can be when cloudy is true or cloudy is false. And for each of these states of cloudy, we have the two states of rain. And these two states have to sum up to one. Okay? And also for the conditional probability of false, uh, sorry, of, uh, and then the probability of uh, cloudy, the conditional probabilities of rain are going to sum up to one. Okay. There, um, the purpose of a Bayesian network is to give uh, posterior probabilities for events that are not directly observable, or if they are observable, uh, the cost is very, very high. So we can do diagnostic analysis. This means that we we know the effects, and we want to infer what it was the most likely cause. Or we can do predictions where we know all the conditions of the causes and we want to see what are the probabilities of having a certain effect. So in order to do this diagnostic or prognostics, uh, we need to carry out a probabilistic inference of all belief updating, which is the computation of a posterior distribution of acquired node uh, given uh, evidence, but not always, as we can see in this example. So, from our uh, example network, we want to compute the, the posterior probability of the grass being wet. This means uh, grass being uh, wet grass being true. Okay? So, we first have to uh, define our joint probability distribution, which is given as the product of each of the nodes in the network. And then we have to marginalize out all the variables that are not in the query. In this case, W is our query, the W corresponding to wet grass. And then um, the variables that are not included in query are cloudy or C, Splinker or S and rain or R. And then we just have to distribute these, um, these, these variables and then we just mar marginalize them out. Uh, this marginalization process is, is only um, summing all the possible combinations of the states of the nodes in the network. As we can see here, the first line has all the all the nodes are in the state true. And then we sum this line to the next line where, where the variable C 
is in state false, but the rest of the variables are in state true. And then in the third line, uh, C is, is, uh, is true as well as the other variables except for S, where X is in, in state false. And so on. Okay? And now we only have to uh, we only have to substitute the probabilities in each of our variables in this uh, in this expression. So the probability of C being true is 0 0.8. So we just substitute it here. And then the probability of S being true given that C is true is S is true given that C is true is 0 0.1. So we just put it here. And then that rain is true, but given that cloudy is true. So is this one here? And then W is true given that S and R are true. So it's 0 0.99. And then we carry carry on substituting these uh, probability distributions. Uh, once we have finished substituting, we can just compute um, our posterior distribution, which is going to be this value over here. So the probability of the grass being wet is of 0 0.99. Um, 1723. Okay, so now what happens when we introduce evidence? So now we have to use our base, uh, base uh, rule, which uh, is going to give us is so which is defined as the our likelihood um, distribution divide, divided by the evidence. So, in the numerator, we have this expression, and here we have to marginalize out the variables that are not in the query. So, in this case, the variables in the query are C and W, so we have to marginalize out S and R. Okay? So, we carry out the same procedure as before, and then we marginalize out S and R, and then we substitute uh, the probabilities in of each of our variables here. And then we go, uh, we get the probability of our prior, and then we only have to divide by the probability of the evidence. In this case, the evidence is when is that the wet grass is true, and this was calculated uh, before. Um, in the previous example, and then at the end we can get this. Uh, this is uh, our posterior distribution. So the, there is a probability of uh, 80, 0 0.89 uh, of the of being cloudy, given that we already observed that the grass is wet. So even though this. Um, these operations seem, seem to be uh, simple. When we have a, a higher number of nodes, uh, it can be uh, very hard to do it by hand. So we need to do to we need to use some computational tools, and for that we need um, we are going to use how to use we are going to show how to use uh, the Cosan toolbox for Bayesian networks. So during this uh, video. We just presented what are uh, the Bayesian networks, as well as the components, the advantages, disadvantages, and some applications. Uh, we showed how to build a Bayesian network, the types of reasoning that we can do uh, by computing inference, and a numerical example. In our next videos, we are going to show how to build and use a Bayesian network in OpenCosan. As always, if you have some problems launching the Bayesian network toolbox, uh, in OpenCosan, you can contact us in contact at cosan.co.uk or to my personal email address. Happy Cosaning! <laughs>